Hey everybody, welcome back to the Print 3D channel. Today is November 17th, and that means day 321 of the 3DP 365 project. And on today's episode from the Pin Shape newsletter a couple of weeks ago, something they call one of their more riskier designs is something they actually can't officially recommend that you use it functionally, but I'm gonna. And that's a 3D printable slingshot, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back, and thank you for joining me here for day 321 of the 3DP 365 project. On today's episode, a 3D printable slingshot. Yep, a 3D printable slingshot. This was actually featured in the Pin Shapes uh, weekly newsletter of their prints of the week for you guys to check out and print, and they recommend that you don't actually use it functionally. But it's a slingshot, and ever since I was a little kid, I've always loved slingshots. Now this isn't like those really cool wrist rockets that have a folding piece that holds down onto your wrist and it has surgical tubing that you can like pull a mile and shoot a uh, metal bearing like through a house. This is more of a toy. Although if you did print this with 100% infill or even a strong infill, even 50% infill and maybe used quite a few perimeters, top layers and bottom layers, this could be a really good functional, really, really good functional slingshot. Now I just put a little cheap little rubber band in here and I just tied a couple of knots in here just to show you guys that it does have slingshot capabilities. The print itself, it turned out awesome and I'll put the link down in the description so you guys can download and print this one yourself. And once we had it downloaded from Pinshape, we sent it over to Simplify 3D for slicing. In Simplify 3D, I used four bottom layers, four top layers, three perimeters, and 20% infill. And I also printed this out at 35 or actually 40 millimeters per second and the print itself, it only took about two and a half to three hours to print, and it really turned out good. I mean, I am impressed with the, the flat surfaces are really, really nice. I did have one little problem though on my first layer, and I'm kind of a first layer addict. I like to make sure my first layer is perfect, but I couldn't see it because the extruder was in the way. And what happens is with the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus and the BL Touch, with the 16 inch board, it takes nine measurements in the current version of Marlin I'm running. And the in-between areas are what I call dead zones. And if I put a, a very small part or a small area of a part into one of those dead zones, sometimes I get what I call BL touch drift. And it's caused by the BL touch. I know it's, that's the problem. Because if you take a measurement here and a measurement here, there's gonna be an area in the middle where it's kind of guessing. And if your board is a little bit warped, and I do have a sanded acrylic board, so there could be some defects in it, it's gonna, it's gonna um, overlook those defects because it doesn't measure there. So in one area of the print, the extruder actually got a little bit too close to the board and it was right in the middle of two points, you know, that dead area between the two points that the BL Touch actually measures and a little bit got smeary instead of actually putting down a really good layer. Now I didn't see it and the second layer started and I just left it alone because this is a slingshot. But you can see that some of that had peeled off when I peeled this off, when I uh, freed this from the sanded acrylic board. It's not a big deal because I did use four bottom layers, so there is another three layers underneath there. But it kind of bothers me when that happens, and it does happen on occasion when I do hit one of those dead zones on the big giant 16 inch by 16 inch board. But either way, the rest of the print turned out awesome. There are no problems with it whatsoever. There are no blobs, there are no globs, there are no signs of over or under extrusion. There's no layer skips or layer shifts. My top layers are really, really nice. It really did a good job. The model itself is actually really, really good because even though I have a really large hand, there's enough finger grips on here for my, all my hands to fit on here really, really nice. And there's room on the back here for my thumb to sit. So when I pull back the rubber band, I have something for leverage. And this is a good test for filament strengths, but you definitely would have to put some surgical tubing or a heavy duty rubber band in here to really test it. Because if you just bend this, that's not really testing it for slingshot capabilities along with strength. You actually have to use it as a slingshot. And like I said, I'm really happy with the print. I do have a little piece of support material here, and I haven't tried to fire it yet because I just kind of jerry-rigged it up here with this rubber band, but I'm pretty sure it does fire really, really good, even with this cheap little rubber band on here. So definitely check this out. Please use caution. It's definitely not a kid's toy. And if you build one, post your stuff up on social media. I'd love to see some tests with this as a test model, testing out the strengths of filament with infill percentages and different top and bottom layers. 
And this could possibly be a really fun toy to bring up to one of the uh, RepRap festivals or maker fairs, and we could set up a booth and have some sort of slingshot target practice. So this is a really cool item, and it could be a lot of fun. Well, that about wraps it up for day 321 of the 3DP 365 project. I hope you guys found this episode interesting and informative, and if you're looking for ways to support the channel, check out the affiliate links down in the description. And if you're watching this video on Friday, November 17th, make sure you go to matterhackers.com and check out their really cool Blue Friday sale. The link will be down in the description so you guys can reach it easily and check out all the really cool sales they're having on printers, filament, accessories, and a whole, mod, whole lot more. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share those videos, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.